ride cymbal. It might be the most expensive single cymbal on the drum kit, but also the most misunderstood. We hang it up there, then basically ignore it. It just sits there, shielding us from the elements, while we play over on the hats and occasionally hit a crash. Well, I say no more. Great drummers of every stripe played the ride with conviction, with panache. Whether you want to talk about classic rock, pop, fusion, jazz, prog rock, soul, whatever, the ride is there to add texture and depth and to help you shape the song, but it can be hard to master. For starters, you feel all extendy wendy and open to attack instead of huddled around the hats like a smaller target. I'll, I'll bend the wendy. Also, you have two surfaces to contend with, the flat part or bow of the cymbal and the bell, so it's twice as complex. Well, fear not. In today's video, I'll show you how to get your arms around this beast and start rocking like you're ride royalty, like you're in the ride Rod. I'm Nate, people call me the 8020 drummer, and on this channel, we try to go a little deeper on all ye olde drum conventional wisdom. And today, I'll show you from beginner to advanced all my favorite ride patterns. Today on 8020, ride off into the sunset. Stay tuned. And guys, you're gonna see a number of playing examples in today's lesson, and you might be tempted to transcribe them. But I'm here to tell you, you don't have to do that. We've done it for you. We put together a completely free transcription for you, a little workbook, if you will. And you can get that by clicking the link below the player and telling us where to send it. That's it, now on with the lesson. For our first example, let's start off with some good old classic rock. Artists like this. And this. I've been doing this forever. And it's super simple. For a certain type of song at a certain tempo, just play the bell of the ride on quarters. For this style, make sure you get enough stick height on both the snare hand and the ride so they cut through. And if your arms get tired, you can alternate between playing the bow of the cymbal and the bell. Simple, right? The real challenge with this pattern is just knowing where to use it in the song. The most common spot to switch is during the chorus. So you're playing along doing your thing on the hats during the verse, chorus approaching, little fill maybe, then go to the ride cymbal. Slightly more advanced, you can play the ride on the offbeats. This works really well in a slightly funkier context. But when you really want to emphasize the offbeats instead of just quarter notes. To practice this, you can start with the offbeats on the hats to get comfortable, then move over to the ride, trying to keep the same feel. For some people, the spread out feeling requires some practice to feel as comfortable. Sidebar, what do you do with the left foot? Well, you can do anything from nothing at all to quarters, eights, or even more advanced stuff. If you want a lesson I just made on what to do with the left foot, check this card on your screen. But for now, let's not get lost in the sauce. If you feel most comfortable with quarters, great. If you feel most comfortable with no hats for now, also cool. Next, slightly more advanced, we have the swing pattern. Spangalang. You can play it swung while doing shuffles, like this. Or you can play it straight in any kind of halftime funk. For way more depth on the technique involved, you can check out this lesson. But same thing when it comes to practice. I'd recommend you start off playing one and a two anda on the hats while you keep a simple backbeat. Then move the lead hand over to the ride. For now, just play it on the bow or the flat part of the cymbal. Try to keep the snare the same volume. 
It can be tempting to make the snare softer when you're focused on the cymbal. For any rock or funk style, just make sure you're not lowering your stick height any lower than you want. You can also practice improvising where you put the kick drum with this kind of pattern. Next, you can play with the swing pattern in straight sixteenths and end each group of three on the bell. Now we're getting into some of the bread and butter of funk ride cymbal. This has a really funky, subdivided feeling when you nail it. If the coordination is tough, you can practice just the cymbal, then add the other limbs back in. You can also practice one bar on the bow and one bar hitting the bell. Still more advanced, you can turn it around so it's the same pattern, but now the accents are falling on the offbeats. This is super funky when you nail it. The most important thing is getting a nice relaxed feel and using your arm weight to get a nice full sound. Next sidebar, ride bell technique. The most important thing is you're relaxed. Hitting the bell is a technique where you'll admittedly have to extend your elbow away from your core a little. I also like to rotate the wrist to more of a German grip when I'm hitting the bell because I think it helps give the stroke more weight. To do this and keep the elbow down and relaxed results in the signature serpent arm you see so many good drummers making. I'd also recommend positioning your ride cymbal so you don't have to extend too far to hit the bell. Good? All right, now time for one of my favorites. Override. If you've got an odd meter like five or seven and you play half notes on the bell, it'll sound like it's on the beat for the first bar of the pattern, but then off the beat for the second bar. I've heard this called override. Vinny was the king of this. this you can do the accent either as just a half note, or you can use that pattern we just learned, and accent the third note of the pattern. Depending on the tempo, I prefer the ghost notes because it gives a little more subdivision. If it's challenging to hear the beat as it switches places over the bar line, you can start by practicing just odd quarters and looping that. Then switch to even quarters. Then put them together. Should we go to our second most advanced one? Claves. Instead of just playing half notes or quarters or override, what if we played a clave? By clave, I just mean a syncopated pattern with some dotted notes. Here's one example. Here's another. To work up to this, I'd start again with the hats. Let's take this particular clave I really like. The first step is to play a simple backbeat and play the clave on the hats with the lead hand. If you're more advanced, you can start to throw in ghost notes with both hands like this. Real quick tip to work on this. Start with just a paradiddle between the hands. Then alter it just enough to bring out the clave with the accents. That's probably months worth of work I just condensed into a few seconds, but that's kind of what's happening in my brain. But again, you can just do the basic version of this. Finally, move the lead hand to the ride. Play the accents on the bell and the unaccented strokes right next to it.
Here's an example of Zach Grooves playing a clave on the ride that sounds sick. Before we move on to the last example, quick reminder that you can get a transcription of everything we've talked about in this video, and we've got a few for free if you click the link below the player and tell us where to send it. Finally, finally, we go to the realm of Purdy and Picaro. Of course, I'm speaking of halftime shuffles, or choufflés, as they say in France. Anyway, I'm going to give you a clave, like the ones we saw in the last chapter. But this one's also a quarter note triplet. Here it is. To practice this same thing, I start on the hats. For everything that's going to be on the ride bell, I do kind of a shoulder stroke on the hats. I think it's really hip to just play quarters with the kick drum. Once again, if you're advanced, you can let some ghost notes creep in. Big disclaimer for all of these. Make sure your sounds are clean, the relative volume of your limbs is cool, and you're not flaming. It's just par for the course here. For a video on the importance of what I call playing clean, just click this card on your screen. Otherwise, that's how you get the gig. And question for you, dear viewer, what's your favorite ride pattern? Leave a comment below. Also, if you're subscribed and you haven't hit the bell, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, guys, hope you're having a good week. Always enjoy this. See you again next week for another lesson of the week. Ha <laughs> ah, ha Okay. Yo, this hit, bro. This was a really, really good solution. It just uh, lacked a little in the execution. But that pulled a lot better. Okay.